Tristan de Cunha was exactly the way I imagined it, overcast at first, but then the light came into play, and I climbed to the top of the volcanic mound from the 1961 eruption that led to the evacuation of the island. Today the settlement is a pretty bright and perky place. It was a lot of fun to look into the yards and see people's houses. The island is also very clean, completely unpolluted. I could drink straight from the streams of rainwater that's filtered by the volcano, volcanic rock. And I head out on the island's one and only road, which goes to the potato patches. Tristan de Cunha feels a lot like a windswept Atlantic island you would see in the northern hemisphere. It was reminiscent of Ireland or Scotland. Uh, there are herds of sheep up in the mountains that the islanders use. And I just love the very peaceful and open vibe of the place. The people of Tristan speak English, but this is their own island and they have their own way of saying certain things. So it was a lot of fun to meet them, to talk with them, to see the skills that they have, and to find out what it's like to live in such a secluded place. Well, my name is Justin Grant Green. I've lived in Tristan all my life. It's like a job interview. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what's it like growing up here? Uh, pretty good, as long as you can find something to do. <laughs> what do you like to do on this island? Uh, build stuff. <laughs> well, first of all, when I went to England, you can't roam free. Here you can. You can get up on top of the mountain. Justin's right. Total isolation means total freedom for the people on Tristan de Cunha. I still can't believe that I made it to this place. I've dreamt of it my whole life, and I actually was there. I have traveled to the remotest island on Earth. 